Here he is, Team Renegade's own Dave Lavelle. Hello, Dave. Coach, how are you? Hi. How are you, Ariel? I'm doing tremendous. Thank you so much for doing this. It's great to meet you. It's great to have you on. Could you possibly describe what the last few days like have been for you? Oh, it's been hectic, really. We've just not too long gone in from London. We just broke. We just broke all the speed barriers getting back from London to get back to Birmingham to obviously get to, just, we just walk through the door. Wow. We're talking like minutes to get this set up and ready to go because. Uh, we got caught up in the traffic coming back from London. Leon came back today, and his family and friends, close friends, we all went and met him at the um, at the airport, and just to give him a little, um, a, a nice little welcome back. Tremendous. Yeah, he was happy to see us. And and thank you so much for doing this. I know it's hectic, and I don't want to you know ruin your your day by having you rush, but I really appreciate it. Um, I mean, there's so much to ask you about, but just just for context. Do you recall the first time you met Leon Edwards? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. Um, when was I that? I was working at a place. It was a uh, little well, you know, um, what, eight, seven, eight years ago. He was a, a, a young whipper, a young whipper snapper, teenager going in the um, a place where I used to work. I was employed there as a boxing coach. It was called the UTC. It was a new venue, and my name was put forward because I lived local. Um, to the management and they was advertising for a boxing coach and I went there they gave me the job um, I think I'd done three maybe four lessons at first a week they liked what they were seeing so they employed me there basically you know 24-7 um, and that's where I first seen Leon I never really had much to do with him because I used to do the boxing classes and it was um, Joe Public used to come in I would do my hour hour and a half class and go but um, because the matted area where I used to do the classes on, they had um, a cage maybe 15 feet away where the MMA lads, the young lads and the, the, the not-so-young lads used to do the MMA. And I seen this young black kid in the cage, along with a couple of other um, young um, whippersnappers, and um, he just caught my eye because he just looked that little bit special. Um, and from there, I seen them... Um, sparring and it was mainly all about head shots with Leon and I just thought well maybe they don't hit body shots because that's an MMA thing but when I got speaking to him started to show him one and two little things one and two little boxing tricks um, uh, how to work the body etc um, him and my my two sons used to um, compete at a, a young age and they're more or less the same age as, as, as Leon and the one was very, very, very good at boxing, my son, Aaron Lovell. And um, he, he, they, they, they became very friends. I think he was talent, attracted talent. And he just blossomed from there, Ariel. In the last few years, uh, with all the roadblocks and the frustrations, how would you describe what it was like being around Leon? Did you ever feel like he was losing hope, losing faith, that all of this was getting to him? Uh, yes and no. Um, yeah, he's, 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 he's a very private kind of person anyway. He, he's, not, he's not a loud mouth. He's not a braggadocious kind of kid. He's the kind of kid that if he was in a room full of people, if nobody didn't speak to him, he'd be happy just sitting there on his own quietly. He's that kind of guy. Um, he's come out of his shell a lot because being around other teenagers and being in the gym where he's got to socialise and he was doing now something he loved, then you see his personality and his character slowly start to come out. Um, me being the age I am, I took him under my wing. Um, I've been in the fight game a very long time and I seen the talent with this kid. Um, and he was got his first one, two, I think it was three fights. I didn't go, but he was asking advice from me and I was giving it to him till he asked me one day, well, I want you in my corner. So I said, well, look, Leon, I don't want to tread on anybody's toes because he had um, he had a trainer at the time who was still learning the game. He was only young himself. But the other lads, that the management that was with him, or so-called trainers, they didn't really know shit about shit. And um, they was leading this kid into, um, into fights where he was relying basically on a guy that had the same, basically, knowledge as him as a raw novice fighter. Um, and I was giving him some tips from my experience 
he appreciated it and he just he, he just said he, he wanted me in his corner and from there I was in his corner ever since. So he finally gets this title fight and it's such a long journey and he's the underdog and people think that Usman's just going to out wrestle him and all this stuff and the first round goes swimmingly. It goes very well for yeah. him. What are you thinking in yeah. the first round? What are you thinking? What are you saying well, to him in between the first and second? Because we've seen everything afterwards, but that one we don't see. Right. Well, the first round, obviously, everything went to plan. he done something, obviously, that nobody's done to Usman. He took him down, mounted him. I think, personally, he went for the strangle, the, um, the, 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 to, 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 to strangle him out a little bit earlier. I think he should have stayed on him and ground and pounded, maybe till the end of the round. But that's all water under the bridge. Um, but, you know, he, went, he took the chance and it didn't work and Usman survived the round. Um, so, yeah, when he came back to the corner, I tell him round by round where he's at. That's my job. And I said, well, look, Leon, you're one up. Good. Let's get back to the, let's, you know, get back to your game. You know, if it goes like this, we're all good. Um, so, yeah, second round, he came back. And obviously, Usman pulled around back. He came back to the round, come back to the uh, corner, uh, made him sit on the stool then and said, well, look, it's 1-1 one, one now, um, Leon. So you got to, you know, you got to stop edging your way in front because if this is close, you know, you ain't going to get no favors here. This is when um, the second round is when you start to get a little more agitated, yes, a little yes. more colorful. What I love about what you were yes. doing, by the way, was you're, you're speaking loudly, you're getting him fired up. But every time, every round, I notice you whisper to him what you think the score is, which I think is very important. Yes. You weren't lying to him. And I also think no. you, didn't, you didn't want the cameras to pick up what you thought the score was. Is that is that an accurate That's thing? That's right. That's right. Yes, to be honest. Yeah. I love it. Um, uh, It's like this era. Anybody knows me, knows me. I don't blow smoke up anybody's ass. I just tell my fighters as it is. Um, I've made friends and broken friends along the way through it, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, so I was telling him round by round where it was. So my panic button started to panic now when he'd lost two rounds straight. He'd won one, lost two. Well, listen, you, this is a title fight, so this is going to be close now. So alarm bells started ringing. The lads in the corner, they are the younger um, of the team and yeah the technical side and the um, you know the, the advice well I can do that also but I knew this kid buttons needed to be pressed he needed to be waken up because I saw him coming back to the corner his body language is the way he's slumping down he wouldn't look at me um, and I'm thinking what is going on here because I knew this guy was on fight physically um, I've watched him train six months prior leading up to this fight and I'm thinking What's happened? I'm looking at the lads in the corner asking them, what, 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 what has happened? Not realizing um, that it was the altitude factor because if you watch the other fights, yeah. um, all the other fights, Raccoon, um, even Aldo, even Aldo gassed out and, and, and Aldo was a little machine. Um, the only man that didn't gas out was the little Russian kid. Mm, um, who, fought, um, who fought Aldo yeah. because Georgia. believe it or not in the changing room he was in the same changing room as us and he did like more or less a 45 minute hour warm up me and Henry and the other coaches were looking at each other thinking wow and you're going to go out and you're going to do you're going to go out and fight, fight Aldo but because now looking back high in sight um, he comes from the mountainous areas from Georgia mm. you know so he he, he was basically obviously um, climatized, if that's what you want to call it. And when I did do a little bit of research, um, I believe if you're going to altitude, you need a minimum of six to eight to 10 weeks before your body totally accepts, obviously, the blood levels, the oxygen levels, and all the science bits that go with it. Um, but Leo was only over there for two weeks. We was only over there for two weeks. So that was, to me now, the factor, because I knew Leon was on point, all the rest of the coaches, me, Coach Henry, Coach Camby, we all knew he was on point. Um, so to see him start gassing like that, at first I couldn't work it out. But anyway, we're in a fight, so that's irrelevant. I just needed to get this kid shook up to make an effort because I know the work he's put in. And I just didn't want him to finish a fight quiet as a lamb after. This is his big moment, and you're going to go out. Uh, 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 at least, Leon, go out with a bang. At least give the crowd, give yourself a chance. 
And, you know, I just I just told him as it was, come round four, panic station, and I just, just read him the right act, simple as Ariel. The part that really gets to me, and I think a lot of people, is when you say to him, stop feeling sorry for yourself, son. And also, I love the fact that you call him son, and I don't know if that's part of your vernacular, but it kind of like hits home there, because it, it sounds, when you're yeah. listening to it, if you didn't know any better, it sounds like a father speaking to his son, and you're saying, stop, yeah. and he's not looking at you, and he's saying, I don't... I'm not feeling sorry for myself. So what's wrong with you? It's a beautiful yeah. sequence. It's a beautiful exchange. Yeah. Have you ever yeah. spoken to him like that before? Have you ever seen that out of him before? Um, no, because as I say, Errol, I have never seen Leon in that state, in a fight, in training at no time at all. So I could not understand. I was getting frustrated. I couldn't put my finger on it there and then. Um, but I just had to do what I had to do. It just came out natural where... I mean, as I say, uh, Leon, he knows my sons were all very tight, Fabian, me. They're my boys. I look at them like my sons. Um, and anybody who knows me, Ariel, um, any fighter I take under my wing, whether regardless of what race, creed, colour, I took a vow, being used and abused as an amateur and a pro boxer, that when I did start training, you know, people, children, um, teenagers, adults, I would never. Let them be abused by anybody in the sense of I'm not going to throw them in there for a quick book or I'm not going to throw them in there to make the show up that you can, you know. And I, as I say, I've made friends and broken friends along the way, but that's my that's my vow to myself and my God that I would never allow any kid I took under my wing to be used and abused by anybody. And, 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 and Leon included, Fabian included. I look after them like if they was my sons and that's it, full stuff. Uh, why did you think he was feeling sorry for himself? Well, his body language, Ariel. You know, he's in a fight. He's not looking Usman in the face. You know, Usman at one stage followed him. I think it was round ending the round three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's trying to like big brother him, huh? Yeah, it's like Leon. He had Leon down. Um, the, the, the round had ended. Leon got up and started to walk, and Usman. You know, he had his tail up and he sort of funny and Leon didn't even look at him. He came back to the corner like a sheep. And I'm thinking, this ain't you, son. This ain't you, Leon. Come on, man. And then, like, it's, as you've seen, and uh, the rest is history. I just had to just do what I had to do. What are you thinking in the in the fifth round? Did you, did you lose hope at any time? Well, I'm going to be honest, Ariel. When I read him the right act, I went back to the corner. I said a little prayer to myself. Um, Yeah. <laughs> One moment. No problem. I appreciate how emotional it is for you. You've you've known him for so long. Yeah, yeah. So um and I just wanted him to just go out on the shield. I didn't want him to um go out like a lamb. Um and yeah, it was we call it a divine inspiration, but where he pulled it from. God only knows. Um, he, um, you know, at the last minute, and this kick was, I don't, I know a lot of people are talking about it was a fluke, but it wasn't a fluke. Um, Coach Henry, we had drilled that with him. I put a little, um, a little, my little bit in that Henry was letting him kick, but I wanted him to kick when he, when he slightly off the line. And um, he caught him and, and it, you know, like, you know, <laughs> In safari, when you see them elephants and them buffaloes get shot, and he just they just go down, and the way Usman went down, I knew from there it was game over. And um, yeah, it just it just it just unfolded that way, Ariel. Um, and yeah, oh, what can I say to that? You know, as you see the emotions after, um, and that was all real. Um, uh, yeah, and, and that's what what more can I say? Uh, BT Sport actually posted a video today of you and Coach Henry going over that sequence in training. So you have been okay. validated. It's incredible. I actually posted as well and tagged you on Instagram so you can see. I mean, it's you in there talking to Coach Henry, and you guys are going over that he's going to do that exact same thing. So anyone who says that this was lucky is out of their mind. You will see this after the interview. I'm sure I know you were driving. So massive kudos to you guys. Have you ever okay, in all your years okay. of combat sports – uh, either, you know, as a fighter, or as a coach, whatever, have you ever experienced anything like the feeling, like the emotion that you experienced when you saw him KO Usman? No, no, never, ever, ever. 
Um, never. I've, 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 I've been a fighter myself. Um, I've watched fighting all my life. Boxing, boxing and cricket was my passion. Not so much cricket now. Now the West Indies have gone to pot. But um, yeah, boxing and getting involved in MMA. Because um, when I first got involved with MMA and seen this thing, it was brutal. I mean, I was introduced to it. I was working in a factory um, at Dunlop, not too far from Erdington. And a, a, a young uh, lad that worked with me, he, he said to me, um, what do you think of this MMA thing? I said, well, what, what are you on about? He said, I'll bring in some videos and let you see that them days, Heist Gracie was going in there with his gi. Uh, you had Kimbo. Um, what's the other one? The um, Shamrock Boys. Um, yeah. Uh, and they was kicking each other in the face. They was, it was, there was no rounds. It was a middleweight could take on a heavyweight. I'm thinking, what the hell is this all about? Um, but then it gradually, they started to modify it, put rules in it and weight categories. And, you know, it, it's sort of like, as you see, it gathered momentum along the way. Um, and, yeah, I just gradually got into it. My son done a little bit of it because he was an amateur boxer. But when the amateur season was out, he was just looking for something to do. Um, and he came to the UTC where I was teaching boxing and seen the MMA and took to it like a duck to water. Unfortunately, he didn't follow through with it, but that's another story for another day. Mm. And um, But yeah, I linked with it, started to appreciate the ground game, the wrestling part of it, and the art of it. And yeah, it got my respect eventually, and it, now I love it. Have you, <laughs> you seen... Know, I've been involved in it now, what, 12, 13 years, maybe? Maybe a bit more? Have you seen this video of you guys talking to him, but to the to the Rocky music? Oh, when they show the red writing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. This is not this thing has This is has like 4 million views on Twitter and it's been passed. I mean, like this is a real viral thing. Every fighter I was talking to Kayla Harrison this morning, Brendan Lockdane mentioned it. They all say they can't stop watching it. They can't stop watching you guys talking to him in this video. And I'm just I I would imagine life has changed a lot for you, right? A lot of people now know who you are, are reaching out to you, talking about you. Has to be a little bit surreal, no? Wow. Yeah, well, to be honest, um, Ariel, it is because, Leon will tell you personally, I don't... Um, I'm, I'm the last of the old school. Let's put it like this. Um, technology, I'm not saying I don't keep an eye on it and make an effort to, 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 to keep up with it. You've got to, haven't you? Um, but I'm not this one for the latest phones. Um, I mean, I had a Nokia phone. If it never broke, I'd probably still have it. <laughs> but I've got uh, one of the first iPhones. Um, I'm happy if I can text a man, um, phone a man, and vice versa. But now with this, I was in, I mean, WhatsApp was new to me going back probably three, four years ago. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> so my sons, obviously, being of a younger, even my grandkids, they can now show me things on uh, what to do with phones, um, et cetera. And now, um, you know, it's just advanced, hasn't it? And you gotta, you got to make the effort. So my boy, since this happened, I said, well, Dad, you've got to set up, um, what do you call it? Uh, Instagram. Instagram page. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So, um, and, 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 and that's it. So within, I believe my son said within two days, we had something like, how many hits was it, son? About 10,000 hits. Yeah. So, I mean, I was just, I don't even know how to, to, to honestly, how to look at it. My son's still showing me how to, how to work it out. But, you know, it is what it is. It's beautiful. It is what it is. It's beautiful. Even my mother yeah. sent me the clip yesterday saying, I can't stop watching this. This is incredible. There's oh. just something beautiful about the way you're speaking to him and getting him riled up and then the payoff of him winning. Yeah. Could I ask you what, I, I know you, you, you've just come back, but like, what does this mean for Birmingham? What does this mean for the people over there? Listen, Ariel, it's massive where we're from. We've come, we're, we're living in in inner city areas where it's, well, when I say poverty stricken, it's, it, that sounds a little bit harsh, but it's not far from that, and especially with the climate of the day to day with the, the raising of the um, gas prices, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, where I live now, I'm a stone's throw away from um, a high street. And if you, excuse me, if you walk down my high street, every 50 yards, there's somebody sitting on the floor begging. Um, every, on every corner, you'll see maybe a junkie or a, 
a drunkard passed out. It's 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 just it is it is what it is. And Leon doing this, the kids are running riot up here. They're stabbing each other, killing each other, lock, stock, and barrel, shooting each other. It's getting out of hand. Um, but Leon, coming from, from where we are, um, a little place called Erdington in Birmingham, um, you know, this is a kid that, as you know, could have easily gone down that path. He very easily, and his brother, could have easily gone down that path. Um, got themselves into trouble, but God was good that it wasn't serious enough that he had a life uh, affecting a long term effect on them, and um, they managed to pull it, pull it back. That's all down to their mother, um, as you know. Um, Leon's story, passing the gym, she was coming from work, grabbed him and said, "Look, get your ass in there, you know, and see what, see if you like it. Try and do something." And the rest is history. But the 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 the, the area now for what Leon has done, they've just finished painting the mural in the same town, um, High Street, what I've just told you about. They've just, I think it was, it was yesterday or the day before, they just finished painting a mural for him, which obviously we're going to go down Saturday and um, get everybody there and obviously um, take pictures and let the world see what this kid has done. As a young black kid from Birmingham, from Erdington, a deprived area, this is what you can achieve. Yeah. Um, it's in the process of doing certain things because he does do work with schools and, you know, He's in that knife thing, is it Jimmy Manoa and yeah. um, Darren? Darren Tilly. So he is doing things, but this now has put him on a stage now where obviously the youth are going to look up to this kid and think, well, I can be like that. But why not? He's come from where I've come from. So it's massive for us, not just for black kids in general, but for all the youths in the area. Um, it's, set a, it's set a precedence that there's something for you to follow. There's something to strive after. Life doesn't just mean you've got to be selling drugs or robbing houses or whatever they do um, to make ends meet. Um, but yeah, it, it can only be a great, great, great thing for the area. And it makes me so proud to have been a part of that also because um, I'm involved with a lot of youth um, myself. I still got boxers apart from Leon. I've, I train K1 fighters. Um, I've got a lad I've just turned professional the other week so I'm still involved with the youth but this is now give them a dream that you can achieve something if you put your shoulder to the wheel you know uh, last thing for you if uh, you know if it was up to you where's his first title defense and against two well if it was up to me obviously England yeah um, I know there's big talk about Wembley but listen where we live we're stone throw from our our football ground, which is Aston Villa, which can hold fifty six thousand. Let's go. We're the bit third biggest. It's the third biggest um, stadium in the country. So I know Dana would entertain Wembley, London, the capital. But why not bring a bit of capital into where we live in Birmingham, in our underprivileged areas, and let some money spin and generate around our area? Why London? But that's my opinion. I don't think it'll go that way. I love it. Throw it out there anyway. I love it. And yeah. would it be Usman 3? Is that what you want? Why not? If if if, if, if that's the script, um, so be it. But, you know, you never know how this thing works. There's a lot of um, wheeling and dealing behind closed doors, as you know, Ariel. We're in a dirty game, and you've got to know how to play your cards and keep your cards tight to, tight to your chest. Um, you know, I know that the gearing up this hammers that guy to... You know, he's their next cash cow and, you know, um, they're push, they, 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 you know, they're fast tracking him. So, listen, uh, it's not a foregone cl conclusion that um, we're going to get um, Usman because let's not forget Ariel. Um, I don't know if you know about fighting. I presume you do. But um, I, in my time, I mean, I've heard a uh, few people skirt around the um, what I'm going to say, like Khabib mentioned some things. But I don't know if you know this area. Um, Usman had a loss early in his career where he got choked out. This is before he was in the UFC, yeah? Mm. Well, he's never been knocked out. When I'm talking about knocked out, there's one thing a fighter getting dropped and getting counted out, but he's still conscious or taking a body shot and couldn't get up from it or getting stopped on his feet. The referee stopped the fight, pulled the other guy off him. But when you get knocked out as a fighter where you just wake up and think, well, what's happened? Let me tell you, Ariel, it can be a life-changing um, it's a life-changing event. And I'm not just talking in fighting. I'm talking in life itself. Because mm. Usman is a bully-style fighter. 
And when a bully gets knocked out or when he gets hurt that way, he'll always, that will always be in the computer, mate, regardless what he wants to say. And does it change him? Does he now become gun shy? Does he now become more cautious? We don't know. So when we're talking Usman next, this is not a full gun conclusion and a guarantee. Let's see physically he can get back to where he needs to, but can he mentally? Okay. Wow. Tremendous yeah. stuff. Yeah. Coach, tremendous stuff. Yeah. Congratulations to you and the team. Uh, so happy yeah. for you guys. So happy for Leon. One of the greatest moments yeah. that I've ever seen, not just in MMA, but in sport in general. Just watching it yeah. is something I will never forget. And I can't stop thinking about it. I'm still on a high. I can't imagine how you're feeling. Thank you so much for oh, doing this, man. my friend. Yeah. I really my appreciate kids, it. My kids, my grandkids, everybody keep playing. I'll tell you that. Wow, this is getting, it's getting a little bit too much now. <laughs> but one more thing before I go, Aaron, if you don't mind. Um, I would just like to say that... Um, What's happened for, for, for Leon is not no one-man show. Um, this has been a big effort. Um, Coach Henry's played a massive part in this, Henry Clementson. Coach Camby's played a massive part in this. The lads from T Renegade, these sparring partners who've prepped him for this, Nathias Nef Fredericks, uh, Matty Byfield, uh, Mike Eunice, uh, Mush, Aiden, Tom Breeze. You know, everybody's played their little part to prep Leon for this because we know that Leon winning this now is not just benefited Leon, it's benefited those lads as well. It's give them, he's, he's, he's our shining torch now, not just for the area from where he comes from, but for all the young kids in the gym that are aspiring to be a better person, a better fighter, because nobody don't want to see the, um, the blood, sweat and tears that go behind the scenes like us as coaches see. So, I would just like to put a big, um, a big, a big up all the boys. They know who they are. I haven't got to go. The list is, we'll be, I'll be here for the next half hour reading off the list. They know who they are, who's playing a part in this. So, but let's not get it twisted. This has been a giant effort. It just so happened, them words came out out of my mouth on the night, and it just went the way it went, you know? I appreciate but, that. I appreciate that. Yes, You're being sir. humble. I appreciate that. You deserve it. They all deserve it. Everyone deserves the credit. Enjoy this moment. Enjoy the victory. And uh, thank you so much for doing the show. I look forward to having you on again. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated. All right. The, the... And one thing more. I like the way you've always kept the hands back. I all right. That. My That's man. why I love you. you. You've kept him and you looked out for respect. Respect, yeah? respect, my friend. Respect, my friend. All right, brother. There yeah? he is. You too. Take you take yeah. care as well. There he is, Coach Dave Lavelle. What a legend. Wow, what a guy, and what a moment for the Leon Edwards team. That was tremendous stuff.